Welcome back to another Let's Code. I'm Chris Biscardi, and today we are going to create a repo that can be used to generate new Netlify functions repos. We have a couple of things to do today. I run a bunch of my sites on Netlify. Netlify is a platform that has a CDN and some serverless function support that I can deploy anything to their CDN. I can deploy functions to their uh, serverless function hosting. In their documentation on their homepage, they advertise JavaScript quite a bit, but they also support writing serverless functions in Rust. And writing serverless functions in Rust is one of the things that I do quite a bit in the Rust adventure examples. In this case, for example, I've got a Netlify serverless function that uses the Tokyo runtime and an async main function. We've got a couple of structs to deserialize from our event, and we can pull out one of those structs from the body of the request and send back hello to the person's first name. Now, I write functions like this quite a bit, scattered around a bunch of different sites, a bunch of different examples, sometimes in the Let's Codes, sometimes for workshops, sometimes for my own private use. So today we're going to take a look at Cargo Generate and specifically starting a repo under the Rust Adventure GitHub organization that is a collection of templates that people can use to get up and running very quickly with Netlify functions or other things that we build in the future. Cargo Generate basically lets you take a Git repo or a subfolder in a Git repo and clones it down for you and bootstraps a new project with some templating. So for us, the first thing we need to do is create a repository that accomplishes everything that we want it to do for our template. In this case, I've cloned a repo called Netlify Functions Test Repo from my personal uh, GitHub account that uses a make file and some other things to build a bunch of binaries that work on Netlify functions. So if we crack open VS Code, we can see the source main in here, and we see that we're using AWS Lambda events for some of the types that are coming in from the Netlify functions handler function. And we're using Lambda runtime, which is an AWS uh, Lambda runtime that Netlify also uses because Netlify functions also run on AWS Lambda. So I think this is pretty good. I think that um, one of the things, or one of the changes that I wanna make here is actually not using this make file because I think there is a simpler way these days to do Netlify functions. So the first thing we're gonna do is basically clone this repo and just set it up a bit differently. So I'm gonna accomplish this by copying the entire Netlify test repo uh, repo into a new folder called cargo generate Netlify function test. Now, if we open VS code, we can start playing around with the files that are. Um, Rust toolchain is a really big one. It defines what version of Rust we are actually going to be using on the, Netla on the Netlify functions build system. In this case, we're gonna leave it as stable and leave it in the root. The netlify.toml allows us to define our functions directory. Now I do have a build section in my netlify.toml. I'm not sure we actually need it. We are definitely going to get rid of this make file for a second because I think that if we create a folder here called functions and we move basically all of these files into a functions directory that Netlify should be able to discover all of the bins for our project. Now we do have a functions folder here, um, but one of the things that I wanna test here is actually if we can put multiple functions inside of that functions folder. So we'll create a hello directory inside of functions and I'll start moving things in. And since this is a new computer, I'm actually going to take the advice of this error message and say that the initial default branch should always be main. So now if I remove the git repository that's already there and I type git init, I end up on the main branch. This just cleared all the history from the other repo that we just copied over. The other thing I wanna make sure I try is if I can get rid of this build. So now that we have a number of files, we have a cargo.toml in the functions hello directory. We have a source main.rs in the hello directory. We've got our Netlify toml defining our functions directory, and we've got the Rust toolchain.toml defining what version of Rust we want to use to actually build our functions. I'm going to use the GitHub CLI to push my existing local repository, which is the one we're in right now, up to GitHub. And while I do that, I'm just going to fill out what these things are. Uh, so for the repository name, it'll be the same as the folder name. And this is just a test repo, so I'm just going to say it's a test repo. It'll be public because, uh, you know, this is going on YouTube anyway. <laughs> and it'll ask us if we want to add a remote, and I'll add the remote. Um, remotes are typically called origin, 
if you're not familiar with GitHub remotes or Git remotes in general. So I'll just accept a bunch of these defaults. And it asked me if I want to push the commits up and I do want to push the commits up. So now we should go, we do GH repo view. If we do GH repo view, it'll tell us that we don't have a readme, but that I can view it on GitHub, which I'll click. And that gives us the repo that we just pushed up on GitHub so we can make sure that the code is actually here. So let's just make sure that what we have in our cargo toml makes sense. We've got a couple of dependencies here. I'm not gonna actually change any of them, uh, even though some of these have probably updated since the last time I built this repo, because I know that these versions work. So on netlify.com, I wanna add a new site. Uh, I actually haven't seen this dropdown before, and it's a little confusing. I assume that I want to import an existing project. I never use templates. I don't know what that would do. Um, and I guess deploy manually would be pushed from the CLI. So like the only thing I ever do on Git on Netlify is deploy from GitHub, which is what I assume import means, but import doesn't make sense to me at all. We'll click it. This is the flow that I'm familiar with. So I'm going to hit GitHub and I'm going to search for cargo because that will give us the cargo generate Netlify function test, which I will click branch to deploy main basic build settings. Uh, we don't actually need to set any of these, I don't think, because we're only deploying functions. So I'm going to hit deploy and see what happens. And then we can go watch the deploy log. Now, it didn't pick up our functions, so we have to go figure out why. One of the reasons could be that we didn't set the environment variable for the experimental uh, Rust deployment. And this is going to be Netlify, Netlify experimental build Rust source. And we're just going to... That is not private, but I am setting this to true. Is this an environment variable that's supposed to kind of like that that's secret by default now? Uh, but just to show everybody, this is actually just the word true. We're going to go back to our site and I'm going to trigger a deploy. And now we can see that after we put the experimental environment variable in, it picked up hello source main.rs from the functions directory. Interestingly, one thing it's not showing us is the actual build that Cargo is undergoing. So if you want to see the build, we can revert back to the make file version. In this case, I'm trying to make it as easy as possible for people to get started. So I'm just going to leave it as is because this is an officially supported way of compiling Rust functions on Netlify. So in this case, it took us about two minutes to build the functions. We have one new function to upload. And if we go check our site, we should be able to go to the functions tab. We see hello says open deploy, which I hope means the function. It does not mean the function. Uh, I don't know why open, eh, whatever. We can copy and paste this instead, and we can hit the functions here, and we get hello world, which is exactly what we wanted, which I will make much bigger because that will definitely not show on the YouTube. So this works. One other thing that I do want to test is what happens if we have an additional binary. And of course, as ever, I've misnamed my directory, so I'm gonna name this bin instead. And then because this no longer needs to be in there, it can also be hello.rs. So if I delete the source directory now, we can say we've got hello and we've got world here. And for me, this is just a test to see if multiple bins work with Netlify's build system before we actually move on with the template. And we can see that we actually didn't find any functions. So even though bin is a supported way of creating multiple binaries for a Rust project, it is not supported in this fancy build system that Netlify has supported. So we'll take this back to the original version. So in the git log, I'm going to take this and I'm going to do git revert this commit. I'm going to revert multiple bins and leave a note that Netlify doesn't support multiple bins in source bin yet. We'll just close that out. World no longer exists. We're back to our main.rs. And now we have a git commit that shows that we tried something and then a git commit that says, hey, we needed to actually revert this because it didn't work. And this avoids the uh, potential for needing to force push over our other repo and keeps track of the history where we did actually try something here and it didn't work out. So we actually reverted that change instead of just completely blowing away the fact that we made that change in the first place. So now what we've got here is a full repo that we can use as a cargo generate template. I'm gonna make a directory inside of the folder that I use for the Rust Adventure repos called generate. 
And this is going to be called Netlify function. So now that we have Netlify function, I'm going to just copy the entire thing that we just had with the cargo generate test into the Netlify function directory. So now that we have everything set up, I'm just gonna copy the entire repo that we just created that we know works into the Netlify function directory. And in Netlify function, we have functions, Netlify toml, Rust toolchain, and the whole shebang, which means we can get rid of that and we can code dot inside of the generate. So now we want this to be the entire repo. So we'll get in it in the generate folder. And now I did the uh, accidental mistake of doing git add dot. And that's not actually what I wanted to do because the Netlify functions repo that we just copied in already has a git repo in it. So if we git rm cached, it still didn't quite work. We can see that Netlify function is still in that the git repo is still around. So let me rmrf netlify function dot git and I'll commit this as first function template. I'm gonna create a readme file even though I'm not going to create it right now. And the only thing that's going to go in here is cargo generate templates. Getting started quickly with new cargo rust objects. So now gh repo create. I wanna push an existing local repo. It's the one that we're currently in. It's going to be the repository name of generate. Uh, I'm going to say that the description that we just wrote is the one we're going to use. It's going to be a public repo and it added it to the wrong user. Oh no. So we'll just keep going with this, the remote, et cetera, et cetera, push everything up, deal with everything, uh, accept all the defaults and clear. And we'll do GH repo view. And we see that we have Christopher Biscardi slash generate. Christopher Riscardi slash generate is not what we want. So I'm going to go into the settings. I'm going to scroll all the way down. I am going to not delete the repository, but I'm going to transfer ownership to Rust Adventure because that's where I want this to live. Uh, I know that this is what I want to do and this name is correct. So I'm going to type in or paste in Christopher Biscardi slash generate. I understand transfer. After we submit, we say moving repository to Rust Adventure slash generate. This may take a few minutes if we do Rust Adventure in our GitHub bar and we go to the repositories, which, wow, I have 24 repositories in this organization these days. It's a lot. I have a lot of, uh, a lot of Rust code for these workshops. And then we have the generate repo right here. And we notice that we have a little bit of a problem. There's a little bit of a little right angle arrow here. And that means that we didn't actually delete the Git repo when we thought we did earlier. Let's pull all of this back open. And the suggestion that uh, the suggestion that we got from the original git commit operation is this git rm cached Netlify function, which we'll run right now. Remove old git repo. Then I'll add everything that we have here. Netlify function init. And I will push this up if I can type correctly. And now when we refresh this page, when we view the code, we actually have a regular folder here, the regular folder icon, not a sub git repo. And we click in here and we'll see all of our files, which we couldn't do before. So now we need to see if this works with, I forgot that GitHub totally destroys the usability of their site if you are on a zoomed in screen. So let me zoom out here because the thing that we need to do is get to this button, which disappears. We'll go to HTTPS, we'll copy this URL, and then let's go take a look at Cargo Generate. So installation of Cargo Generate is Cargo Install Cargo Generate, which we will which we'll do. So let me cd into some temporary directory here. Make dir temp the temp. Oh, I already had a directory here. So let's do Cargo Install Cargo Generate, which will install the Cargo Generate subcommand. So now we have Cargo Generate installed, which means that we can start using our new template. Standard usage is to pass a dash dash git flag to cargo generate or short cargo gen. I believe if we want to use cargo gen, we have to actually add a cargo alias, which as I read right below, there is a note that says you do need to set up a cargo alias if you want to use the shorthand for gen. Uh, but you can see here that we have a cargo generate. Let me just bring this into view if I can figure out how to do that. And this is cargo generate dash dash git and the full HTTPS URL and then the potential relative template path. So if I clear here and we do cargo generate, get the full path to the Rust Adventure repo that we just set up, 
a Netlify function, then we are told that we don't have a cargo generate uh, config file in the root, which is totally fine. That's something that is uh, that we just haven't set up. And most people won't have set up the first time they do this. So the project name will be my first Netlify function. And then we see that there is a directory here called my first Netlify function. And if we look at everything that we have in here, we have everything that we need. Um, and we have a brand new Git repo that was initialized for us. So that's that. And we know this works because we just tested it. So we've got the hello function. If we open the cargo toml, we see the package name is hello, yada, yada. And this is a, a decent starting position. Now from here, cargo generate does give us the ability to template out different facets of our, uh, of our Netlify function template. If we take a look at the cargo generate subcommand, we can see that there's a number of options that we can actually take advantage of when creating these repos. We can use dash dash bin or dash dash lib to populate a variable crate type when we go to replace different features or include different pieces of code in the generate template. And notably, init will generate the template directly into a current directory. So we could have another template that was not the Netlify function entire site setup, but just a Netlify functions function that went in the functions directory. And cargo generate could be cargo generate rust adventure slash generate like individual Netlify function. And it would just bootstrap a new cargo project in the functions directory for us without all of the extra scaffolding that we saw. Now, as a generate template project, we can ask people for different variables. So we could ask them for like, hey, what do you want this function name to be? Um, or other things like that. And notice here that we can also do owner slash repo. So let's, let's take a look at that at some point. Um, there are a number of things that we can use to enhance this. So let's take project name, which is one of the variables that we can use to replace in different files. And let's throw it into our cargo toml, which we do need to have this for. And then we also throw it into the directory name here. And before we push this up, we can actually test with a cargo path. So instead of dash dash git, we'll do cargo generate path, home, GitHub, Rust adventure, generate, Netlify function, we'll name the project name, second function, second function. And we can see that by using the project name variable in our directory path here, we were able to let the user specify where this should go, right? So we have a Netlify function here. And if we look at the, if we get rid of these for a second, if we go into the second function directory that we just created, we can see there's a readme here. It's not quite what we wanted. So maybe the dash dash path didn't really work, but it used the whole repo as the template. So we can actually go into the Netlify function and we can see inside of functions that there is a second function directory as we specified in our directory path. Inside of second function, we have the cargo toml and the cargo toml defines our package name to be second dash function. This is actually going to be wrong for us. We're going to want the underscore here. So instead of using project name in the cargo toml, we probably want to use the crate name. But other than that, everything here works. That's how you create a cargo generate template. That's how you use template variables. And this is now available for you to use. So link in the description uh, with the code if you want to try this out. If you do, let me know. Let me know how it goes. And I'll catch you in the next Lexcode.